my Iron Banner hangover is over. I'm ready for some guns. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm Death Revolve. This is Destiny. We're going to do some Arms Day fun. What I like to do in Arms Day is go over the foundry orders that Banshee has available for us to make choices on. Look at those. We'll look at the Philotus weapons and we'll look at next week's foundry orders that are coming. I'm just going to make some picks, give some recommendations, and have some fun looking at some guns. So let's get right into it. First gun up. Now, I do have all the guns that he sold last week as Foundry Orders, plus I think one bonus gun that we're going to be looking at in just a second. So the first gun this week is the Thessen FR4. This is a fusion rifle. It's one of my favorite fusion rifles in the game, and it looks like we've got some pretty decent options right now. Now, this gun has actually very, very decent stability. So you're actually looking for range. Fusion rifles are a little funny. If they have good stability, you want to go for range. If they have good range, you want to go for stability. You really want the most you can get out of both of those stats. But uh, this one is so good because it has such good stability and such impact. Such impact, mini stability. Uh, so first option we have has a replenish, skip rounds, handlaid stock, range finder, and surrounded. I don't like handlaid stock because you lose range. Range finder makes up for it, but still not quite the best situation to be in right there. Next up, we have Life Support, Army of One, Quick Draw, Handlaid Stock, and Exhumed. Um, quick Draw is good. Handlaid Stock, like I said, not so good. This one, uh, not as good as the other two, I would have to say. And then the final one, Army of One, Rangefinder, Injection Mold. Hmm. I didn't know Injection Mold reduced range too, but it gives you faster handling. And I don't think it does it. It gives you actually more stability than Handlaid Stock? No. No. Um, third option. This is the best of the three. This is the one I would recommend you pick up. The Thessen FR4. The third one with Range Finder and Army of One. I'm going to go ahead and pick that one up. I'm doing it. So here's the bonus gun for the week. The one I've been holding on to for a long time. That I want something very good on. I want something very specific and I didn't see it. I want Head Seeker, Counterbalance, Handlaid Stock, or uh, so something like that. You want counterbalance counterbalance is good so I, I see a really good option right here i all already have a counterbalance version though so we're gonna see what we got we'll go through them uh not likely to pick one of these up this week but we got surrounded rodeo single point sling hand lights or hand loaded and oiled frame so that's eh, it's not very good it's okay but it's I don't know why I'm talking like that. Next up, glass half full, unflinching, high caliber rounds, hand loaded, and oiled frame. And then finally, we have a good one, I think. We'll see. Counterbalance, army of one, and oiled frame. Oh, womp womp. The problem with this gun is the, the kick pattern is very hard up and to the left, and it's not consistent. So you really need counterbalance to get that under control and then hand laid stock to turn it into a laser beam. Uh, I really want, like I said, head seeker, counterbalance, hand laid stock because you can't get brace frame on this model. Uh, you can't get hockey pulse rifles. You can't get brace frame for some reason. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Um, so that's a good version. If you're holding on to the live meal, this one's okay, but I would hold out for something better, something with more stability and counterbalance. Which is what I'm going to do. Next up, we have the Suros JLB-47. I'm seeing some good options right here. Uh, it has a good blast radius, blast velocity, or a good blast radius and velocity. I guess the blast velocity would be pretty high, too. Whatever that is. Um, <laughs> so we got soft launch, hard launch. Like what I'm seeing, heavy payload. Get that good blast radius. Uh, grenades and horseshoes, javelin, and quick draw. That's pretty much a god roll right here on a PvP rocket launcher. Uh, it's only got two in the mag, but you're not going to get tripod and grenades and horseshoes on this one. So I would definitely pick up the first one. I don't know if the other two could be any better than that. Um, from what I'm guessing, no. Final round. Oh, final round rocket launcher. I'm not, not going to recommend you get that because that's silly. It's just silly. Uh, next up. The final option with tripod is not bad, but you don't you want something with tracking, uh, grenades and horseshoes, or cluster bombs if you're feeling sprightly. Uh, but this one with tripod and javelin and single point sling, nah. First one, the first one is definitely the best one. That's definitely the one you need to pick up. It's definitely one that I'm going to get, and it might actually replace my current JLB 47 because I think if I have it on me, if I had it on me. Have it. I don't think mine has, uh, yeah, mine's got single point sling instead of, uh, ooh, good, good choice here. So I'm going to replace an old gun. 
I've had that one. This one's better. So that's the best 47 I've ever seen. God roll 47 right there. Three more guns. Lots of fun to be had. We're going to continue the process of going through these. First off, let's take a look at the field test weapons. See if any of those are worthy. Because, you know, you can still level up the gunsmith and get guns from him without doing foundry orders. Which I haven't actually done in a while. Uh, I'm hoping Bungie is going to bring something to the gunsmith. Maybe the... Uh, the spring update will have something to do with the gunsmith. I think that would be pretty awesome, pretty fun, and pretty cool. But uh, field test weapons, we have the Hockey Test A auto rifle using its fallen targets, its focus fire. Um, do that anywhere uh, that has fallen, Earth, Venus, uh, Cirrus TSA 10 using Crucible. It's not too bad. It's a primary. It's a pretty good mag size auto rifle, so you'll be all right. Uh, TSR 10 using its high ranking enemies. So I'm saying Cosmodrome for the first and the third one. Uh, test day using its hive targets. You can do this on the Cosmodrome 2. Uh, do it on the way to Skywatch. And then finally, the Hockey Test Day Cabal Centurions. Someone recommended that you do this on the patrol area on the Dreadnought. And that's actually a really good idea. Because there's some, some Centurions that continually spawn there. You can just sit back, pop them in the head, wait for them to respawn. So I can recommend doing that on the Dreadnought now. If not, you can do it on the Scablands, which is not as good of a place. Um, but yeah, the first two doing on Earth. Uh, high ranking enemies always kill those three Hive uh, elites that are down in the basement in the initial spawn area in the Cosmodrome. And then uh, just go to town with the rest of them. This one's not too bad if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. But let's get into the rest of the Foundry orders and then we'll talk about next week's uh, orders. And then we'll, uh, then we'll do a little dance. So we got the AR-41 mid-impact mid-rate of fire auto rifle. Um, some interesting options. So, first up, fitted stock, lightweight, rifled barrel, oiled frame, and rodeo. This is interesting because you're going to get some good stability and some good range out of this. So, uh, yeah, I can I can see that one being cool. It's got the 28 scope, which is my favorite Suro scope. It's just my favorite because it looks the nicest and the coolest. Um, so, that's a good option. That's a good option. We'll look at the rest of them to see what the comparison becomes. We've got one with uh, hammer forged, casket mag, small bore, lightweight, focused fire interesting I, that moves it into an archetype that is not very effective but i have noticed and i have done some little, a little bit of research that focus fire doesn't just change the gun's archetype it actually modifies with the rate of fire and impact and the uh, damage numbers so you're not going to just this doesn't just become an ari 45 that's not quite how it works so interesting combination there some stability some more range and some focus fire if you were interested in that sort of thing that might be the way to go and then partial refund i don't like uh, after an assist though with an auto rifle might be pretty good high caliber rounds hand laid stock Ooh, interesting this would be a good run and gun pvp uh, ari 41 so if you want to do some running and gunning in the crucible you got to get real close with this gun because you're gonna have zero range but you're gonna do some damage if you're running with a group it might not be a bad idea i could see this being a funny trials gun if you're uh, in close quarters so it's got the good scopes the spo 28 57 and 12 uh, those are my favorite scopes so that's an interesting option right there that third one's pretty interesting let me know about this one i'm going to hold off grabbing one i want your opinion on these three are any of them very good very interesting this one's interesting in certain situations if you have a certain play style i would see that being interesting maybe not op but interesting focus fire is good that one's got good stability so three solid options there Ooh, we got the pdx 41 this is one of my favorite guns I've liked it for so long, and we've got some pretty good options. Ooh, that one's very nice. It has the 57 scope, which I like. It doesn't have the 28, but we've got fitted stock, casket mag, if I so choose, counterbalance, which is nice, snapshot, which is nice, and rifle and barrel, which on pulse rifles is not necessarily necessary, but it's still good, so I'm liking that option. That one's solid. Next, we have... Uh, is that private eyes take a knee with perfect balance oiled frame reinforced barrel and snapshot this is not as good as the first one so I would just probably pass right on by that one and then third option we have range finder which is not necessary high caliber rounds range finder speed reload and injection mold Ooh. so we got two solid options this one has the 28 and the 57 Ooh, high caliber range finder injection mold so you're going to get better stability better handling but a little bit reduced range but range finder will make up for that i'm going to say the third one's the best pvp option the first one's really cool too 
Uh, but it's just, you're going for pure stability on the first one with some range. Uh, yeah, definitely grab the third one. I'm picking up the third one. I'm probably going to level that one up and use it because that looks really fun. So final gun, the Tamar D, the Haka Tamar D. These, uh, these Haka sniper rifles have some interesting talent combinations because they get things like counterbalance. Uh, it's got counterbalance, partial refund. I don't think a sniper rifle with an assist is going to happen too often. Uh, perfect balance. Quick draw, which is good. Independent magazine. Uh, no. So, I don't think that one's a very good option. It's okay. Uh, there's better. There's better. I guarantee it. So, take a knee. Improved accuracy and stability. As well as reduced aim time and flinch under fire. That's interesting. I think that's probably pretty good on a sniper. Partial refund again. Explosive rounds, quick draw, and injection mold. Injection mold's good on a sniper rifle. You can get injection mold and uh, quick draw. Which I don't think you can. But, you know, that's just the weird talent set up on these Haka uh, sniper rifles. And then we have the final one, unflinching performance bonus, high caliber rounds, quick draw, and injection mold. Um, increased stability, faster handling, reduced range. Weapon can be drawn unbelievably fast. I'd probably go with this one. Unflinching performance bonus and injection mold because you're much more likely to be getting kills than assists with a sniper rifle. So pick up the third one. That's the best Tamar for today. It's not tomorrow. It's today. So let's take a look at next week's foundry orders. We have the Amalon Cosatus SR4, high impact, low rate of fire scout rifle, Kumke Attack HC4 hand cannon, mid impact, mid rate of fire hand cannon. The Uffern is the high impact, low rate of fire hand cannon from Amalon. And then we have the Jingu Kogo D shotgun and the Aoife Rua D sniper. The Aoife is the uh, Tamar's brother, twin brother, with just a little bit different stats. The uh, Jinga Koko D is a mid to high impact shotgun with three in the mag, which is not too good. Uh, these uh, these are all pretty good. So I'd probably just go left to right. Uh, start with the Kosatis, grab the two hand cannons, and then the shotgun, and then the sniper rifle. In that order, if you're interested, you can stop at the second hand cannon if you want to. You can just buy the scout rifle. You can buy none of them, but I recommend the order of importance is left to right. Pick them up that way. So there you go, guys. Arms Day with Death from Above. Let me know which guns you want me to uh, to look at. If you want me to look at any guns, I had fun picking out guns. Best of the week, definitely that JLB 47 and that PDX 41. The uh, ARI 41, I need your help with. So let me know in the comments which ones I should grab on that one, or if I should just hold it till next week. And then uh, leave a like if you enjoyed enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'm Death from Above, and I'm gonna get out of here. You guys have an awesome day. Check me out in the next video. See you later, guys. See you back.